What's up, YouTube? How are you guys doing today? Uh, it smells like Vin here. I'm going to be bringing you guys another album review, and uh, kind of special, because I'm going to be doing the Nirvana discography. And um, before I get into this review, I just want to apologize in advance. I'm tired. Um, I'm very, very tired. School has been taking its toll. Um, as it, you know, as it can tend to do, um, I literally in school today, I was in math, I literally had to, like, talk myself out of, like, not fainting over and, like, falling over my, I, on my chair. I was, I'm so tired. So if I'm a little lackluster in this review, that's why, and I apologize. And if it's really that bad, I'll just do it again. But I've been listening to this album a lot lately, so I have a lot to say. And, uh, Nirvana, what is there really to say about them that hasn't been said? Well, that's the point of this discography. I have a lot of, I think, interesting opinions about the band, uh, and I want to talk about them. So, um, first of all, I will not be referring to Nirvana as grunge, and do you know why? Well, because grunge is bullshit. Alice in Chains, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Mud Honey, Melvin's, Nirvana, all these bands just got labeled grunge because they came out on a certain, a certain time from a certain place. And someone just said, grunge. I don't even feel like there is a sound to grunge. Okay, yes, I guess if you want to say it's dark or it's, it's a mix of punk and metal and all that stupid shit, I'm sorry for anyone who's... Who, who agrees with the whole grunge terminology. It, they, it, they, the bands who were labeled it didn't like it, so that automatically should tell you probably shouldn't even refer to them as such because they don't even know what the fuck anyone was talking about in the early 90s in the media grunge. It was just an umbrella label, and I think that's dumb. So I will not be saying, oh, this is a good grunge album. F fuck grunge. Pretend that grunge doesn't even exist. Nirvana are just a band, and a phenomenal one at that. So, Bleach, released 1989. Um, you know, the reason that I said that I have a lot of interesting opinions is because Nirvana really are a band that went through phases in their career, and each album kind of represented a different phase. And Bleach is a raw, stripped-down punkified hard rock album, garage rock album, I feel like, um, what you get here are really to the, to the point songs, straightforward short songs, um, really catchy repetitive choruses, a lot of, uh, fuzz on the guitar, I'm not talking like Melvin's or Mud Honey fuzz, not that, but, uh, a, a pretty heavy fuzzy guitar tone, really hard raw production, hard-hitting drums, and uh, you can't hear the bass that much, and I'll get into that when I talk about production, but the overall sound of this album is very punky. A lot of the whiffs are very simple, but that adds to the whole, like I said, raw, punk, punkified nature, and I'm not saying it's a punk album, but it has that feel to it, a raw garage rock, punk rock kind of feel. So, um... The production on this album is good. It's it's raw and it's very rough. And I feel that like, you know, that does help the songs because that's how the songs are. They're rough and they're raw. And the production has a lot of reverb in it. Um particularly in the drums, whenever you hear the snare being hit, there's a lot of reverb. But it was on Sub Pop, which is a fantastic label. They put out a lot of great stuff. Um, so, you know, it has that sort of charm to it. You know, I was on Sub Pop in the late 80s, and that was a big record label at the time. Um, at least a big independent label. And, um, so yeah. Um, production is, is good. The overall songs are very good. There are some Nirvana classics on this, such as, um... Blue, Negative Creep, School, um, those are the, the three main big ones that everyone kind of remembers, but there are so many other great songs, Floyd the Barber, oh, Batter Girls, another really popular one, um, Paper Cuts is probably one of Nirvana's darkest songs, um, another interesting thing about this, and this is kind of cool, is that Kurt Cobain loved the Melvins, 
And I love him for that, because I love the Melvins. The Melvins are one of the best bands ever, in my opinion. Um, and this album really has a Melvins influence, especially in Paper Cuts. Uh, and Dale Clover, Melvins drummer, actually played on a couple songs on here. Um, like Floyd the Barber, he was featured on that song. Or not featured, he played. Um, and that's another thing. Um, the Melvins influence, yes, it's a very big influence. You hear it on Paper Cuts. Like, I remember I got a new... Um, uh, early Melvins before I really decided to delve deep into Nirvana, and when I heard Floyd the Barber, I was like, oh my god, it sounded so much like Louis Park's treatments in Ozma, which was the, um, Melvins' first two, um, LPs, and then, um, Paper Cut sounds a lot like early Melvins, so, there's that, and, uh, Dave Grohl was not the drummer on this album, I forget the drummer's name, um, and he, he's good, you know, he's not bad, he's not, he's no Dave Grohl, but he's definitely good, he fits the songs well, he's an interesting drummer, and he's definitely a really good drummer. Um, unfortunately, Chris Navaselic, you can't hear him, as well. Now, he does have his standout moments on bass, but for the most part, he's kind of just chilling in the back, and the guitars and drums are taking, mo you know, most of the mix, um, but it's not bad. Um... I, I think just this album's main draw, its main focal point, is that it's just very, very raw. It's, it's an album that you can tell they just got together and just played. You know what I mean? A lot of the lyrics are pretty immature, not immature, um, kind of juvenile. I personally like that. Maybe it's because I'm 16 and I have something to do with it, um. But I, I think the lyrics, again, fit the, the um, style of music very well. Very in your face, very, we kind of don't really care about how pretty the songs sound or about how clean they are. It was just about playing really dirty, kind of down-tuned, punkified rock. And it, 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 it's great that way, and I think it's, it's fantastic in that aspect. Because um, Nirvana never really did an album like this again. Um, you know, we get into a new to all, and it's, it's kind of yeah, there. But, um... Yeah, that, you know, that's, that's really, it's the main draw. It's just very raw and, and energetic and, 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 and loose, you know what I mean? That kind of has a loose feel to it, which I enjoy. Um, the flow is, there's really not much of a flow. It's kind of just the songs put together. Um, it's not bad or anything. It's just, it's one of those albums where you can't really say it has good flow or bad flow. It's just, the songs are just there, you know what I mean? There, there's definitely some points where it gets a little weird, um, but with an album like this, I don't think flow is as important. Uh, my favorite songs on this album would probably be Blue, um, uh, School, Paper Cuts, Negative Creep, love Negative Creep, great song, Kurt's vocals on that song are insane, and that's another thing, Kurt's vocals on the sound are really raunchy and, and, and sick sounding, um, uh, Sifter's a really good song, Big Cheese is good, Scarf, Swap Meat, um, Mr. Mustache, all really, really fantastic songs, um, and yeah, you know, it's kind of interesting how Nirvana started out, because on their very next album, it would be the complete opposite of what this album is, you know what I'm talking about, and I'll get to that, um, but, yeah, Bleach, I'm gonna give this album an 8, I very, very much enjoy it, um, I just feel like sometimes some of the songs are a little too repetitive, um, although still being very good, um, like songs like School, Kurt just kind of said the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, but I still enjoy it, um, so yeah, you know what, 8.5, 8.5, definitely a, a solid debut album, you know, took a lot of influence from what was going on in Seattle at the time, but definitely a very, very enjoyable record, and, uh, I will see you guys next time for Nevermind, so... Thanks for watching. See you guys later.